Roll Tide, everyone, and welcome to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Thompson Tractor. I'm Roger Hoover, joined by Kira Goldstein. Roll Tide, Kira. Roll Tide, Roger. Well, it's only been a couple of weeks since the football season ended as the Crimson Tide finished the season undefeated. 13-0 and won the national championship over the Ohio State Buckeyes in Miami, Florida on January 11th. It was the Tide's 18th national championship, 6th in 12 years. Coach Saban now has seven national championships as a head coach, the most in college football history. Just one more than the legendary Coach Paul Bear Bryant. And Coach Saban isn't taking a break either. He's been hard at work putting together another elite coaching staff. Well, when you've been as successful as Coach Saban has been here at Alabama, everyone wants a piece of what he has been building here in Tuscaloosa in hopes that it will translate to success for their program. This season, Texas hired former offensive coordinator Steve Sarkeesian to be their head coach, along with several other assistants. While other schools have hired analysts, don't have staff members to help lead their programs. And Roger, there are currently three coaches in the SEC that are former assistants under Coach Saban, not to mention those at other programs in the country. But what does Coach Saban do when coaches are hired away to other schools? Coach Saban just raises the bar. He does what he does best. Probably no one else in college football can do this. He goes out and hires NFL head coaches to join his staff. <laughs> First of two NFL head coaches Coach Saban has added to his staff, Bill O'Brien, to be a new offensive coordinator for the Crimson Tide. O'Brien has been the head coach of the NFL's Houston Texans for the past six seasons, where he led the Texans to four AFC South titles, four playoff appearances, and two appearances in the AFC Divisional Round. Prior to joining the Texans, O'Brien took on one of the tallest tasks in college football history when he was named head coach at Penn State in 2012. He spent two years leading the Nittany Lions program, posting a 15-9 overall record and a 10-6 mark in the Big Ten, while garnering National and Conference Coach of the Year awards. Before his time in Happy Valley, O'Brien spent five years on Bill Belichick's staff in New England, including calling offensive plays for three seasons and serving as the offensive coordinator in 2011. He coached in Super Bowls 42 and 46 and was Tom Brady's position coach during his MVP season in 2010. And Coach Saban has found Alabama's newest offensive line coach in another NFL head coach, Doug Marone. Marone has been the head coach of the NFL's Jacksonville Jaguars for the past four plus seasons. He guided the Jaguars to the AFC Championship game at the end of the 2017 season after finishing with a 10 and six record. In his first season as head coach in Jacksonville, Marone was named the AFC Coach of the Year after improving the Jaguars win total by seven from the previous season in 2017. Marone also spent two years as the Buffalo Bills head coach from 2013 and 14, winning 15 games over two seasons, including a nine and seven record and a second place finish in the tough AFC East in 2014. The nine and seven mark in 2014 was the Bills' first winning record since the 2004 season. And as Coach Saban starts to finalize the coaching staff, the schedule for the upcoming season has been finalized. We're ready to go in 2021. It all starts for the Tide in Atlanta against the Hurricanes in a rematch of the national championship game from the 1992 season. That matchup in Atlanta against Miami will kick off the season for the Tide on September 4th. The next week, the Tide will host Mercer for their home opener inside Bryant-Denny Stadium. Then the Tide opens SEC play on a huge matchup on the road against the Florida Gators in a rematch of this year's past SEC championship game. The Crimson Tide will close out the month of September on the 25th with their third non-conference game in the first four weeks against the Southern Miss Golden Eagles. Alabama will play four consecutive SEC matchups in the month of October. The first will be a matchup against the Tide's former offensive coordinator as Ole Miss comes to Tuscaloosa on October 2nd. Coach Saban will face another former assistant the following week as the Tide travels to College Station to take on Texas A&M. After a trip to Starkville on the 16th to take on Mississippi State, Alabama welcomes the Tennessee Volunteers to Bryant-Denny on the 23rd. After a bye week for the final week of October, Alabama plays three consecutive home games to begin November. The first one is a big one against the LSU Tigers on November 6th. Then the Tide will play their final non-conference matchup of the regular season against New Mexico State. Then the Tide's final home game will be against the Arkansas Razorbacks on the 20th. Then the Iron Bowl returns to its regular date on the Saturday after Thanksgiving. The Tide and the Tigers will square off for the 86th edition of the Iron Bowl on November 27th. 
That is so exciting to see, Roger. The season just ended, but I'm already excited about the next season. It can't get here soon enough. It certainly cannot get here soon enough, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Some great matchups. It'll also be fun to see how the team evolves with new players and coaches. You know, uh, it's super exciting that Alabama basketball is also doing so well. The men's and women's team are off to an incredible start. Yes, they are, Kira. The tide has been rising all season. And just like football, the men's basketball team is currently undefeated in SEC play. And Coach Oates' squad kept things rolling this past Saturday at home in Coleman Coliseum against the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. It was a team effort for Alabama's five of the Crimson Tide scored in double figures against the Bulldogs as it was a back and forth contest early on with 13 ties and five lead changes in the first 20 minutes of action. Trailing by one with just under two and a half minutes to go before the half, John Petty Jr. sparked an 8-2 run to close out the half to give the Crimson Tide the 40-35 advantage at the half. After another petty three-pointer gave the Crimson Tide the 47-38 lead, Josh Primo gave Alabama its largest lead of the game at 11, with this layup to put the Tide up 49-38. The Bulldogs would get as close as three on two different occasions. The last was with just 58 seconds to make it 76-73 Bama. But there was Petty again, doing what he does best with another three-pointer to give the Tide the six-point lead with just over 30 seconds remaining. Then it was the freshman Josh Primo again. His fast break dunk put the exclamation point on the Tide's ninth consecutive win as Alabama defeated Mississippi State 81-73. to Herb Jones led the Crimson Tide in scoring with 17 to go along with 7 assists, 4 steals, and 3 blocks. Josh Primo finished with 16 points on 4 of 5 from beyond the arc. John Petty and Jaden Shackelford each had 12 with Alex Reese adding 11 points. Hard-fought win for the Crimson Tide at home after winning their previous three games in blowout fashion. Alabama started that three-game run with a 20-point win over the Kentucky Wildcats in Rupp Arena back on January 12th. Alabama welcomed Kentucky to Coleman Coliseum on Tuesday night for a rematch. Could the Crimson Tide do something they haven't been able to do in 32 years? We'll let you know coming up next. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week, brought to you by Thompson Tractor. Winners of nine in a row, the Alabama men's basketball team welcomed the Kentucky Wildcats to Coleman Coliseum for a rematch on Tuesday night. Alabama defeated Kentucky 85-65 in Rupp Arena exactly two weeks earlier. Then Kentucky defeated LSU 82-69 on Saturday, so the Wildcats look to keep that momentum going against the Tide on Tuesday night at Coleman Coliseum. Alabama scored the first seven points of the game and held a 10-2 advantage after this Josh Primo three-pointer. Primo scored seven of the Tide's first 10 points and Alabama led by as many as nine before the Wildcats started chipping away at that lead and tied it up at 30 with just 138 remaining in the first half. With the score tied at 32 and time winding down, Javon Quinterly nailed the long-distance three-pointer as time expired to give the Crimson Tide a three-point lead at the half, 35-32. The Wildcats' defense tightened and the Crimson Tide shooting went cold as the Tide couldn't make a field goal for the first 10-plus minutes of the second half. However, Alabama connected on 10 of 14 free throw attempts during that span to keep the game close. Kentucky took advantage of the Tide's cold shooting, taking their first lead of the game at 43-41 with 12.48 to go. With Kentucky up two, 54-52 with 3.31 to go, Alabama used a 10-0 run to take control of the game at 62-54 with 45 seconds remaining. From there, Alabama knocked down six free throws, and Jaden Shackelford put the exclamation point on the Tide's win with the layup of the buzzer as Alabama defeated Kentucky 70-59. The victory gives Alabama the season sweep over Kentucky for the first time in 32 years. Although Alabama has been relying on the three-point shot as of late, the Crimson Tide showed they can score inside the paint as well as the Tide outscored the Wildcats 28-16 in the paint. Jaden Shackelford had a game-high 21 points, including hitting all 10 of his free-throw attempts. Herb Jones came close to a triple-double as he finished with 13 points, 9 rebounds, and 8 assists. Freshman Josh Primo and John Petty each had 10 to give the Tide four scorers in double figures. With the win, Alabama captured its ninth straight win to start SEC play, which is the second best start to a conference season in program history, trailing only the famed Rocket 8 team from 1955 to 56 that finished with a perfect 14-0 record in league play. 
And with that great start, the Crimson Tide are also starting to get a lot of attention nationally, as the Associated Press voted the Crimson Tide in the top 10 for the first time since 2007. In this week's AP poll, Alabama shot up nine spots from number 18 to number nine. The nine-point climb was the biggest jump in this week's rankings. Alabama is one of three SEC teams in the top 25. Missouri moved up seven spots to number 12, while Tennessee dropped 12 spots from six down to number 18. While the AP poll's ranking of nine was the highest for the Tide by the writers since 2007, the coaches' poll actually has Alabama a spot higher. The coaches have Alabama tied with Virginia at eight as the Tide moved up eight spots from number 16. Joining the Tide from the SEC is Missouri at 12 and Tennessee at 17. Josh Primo had a big week for the Crimson Tide in the wins over LSU and Mississippi State. And for his big play, Primo was named the Southeastern Conference Freshman of the Week. Primo scored a total of 38 points in the wins over LSU and Mississippi State as Primo shot an incredible 14 of 19 from the floor and 10 of 13 on three-pointers. Man, it's just the way that Coach Oates has this men's basketball team playing right now. There are so many different guys on the team contributing from seniors all the way down to the freshmen. It's certainly a great time to be an Alabama basketball fan right now. Men's team currently on a 10-game winning streak, their longest since 1997, and the Alabama women's basketball team headed into this past Sunday's matchup with Auburn 11-2 and 4-2 in SEC play. Alabama began the game on an 11-0 run and led by as many as 12 in the opening period. Late in the second, Auburn pulled within two. However, the Tide responded by scoring the final seven points of the first half to lead by nine at the break, 31-22. Auburn threatened again in the third and early in the fourth as the Tigers cut the Tide's lead to four. But the Tide responded and led by as many as 14 in the final period as Alabama rolled to a big 67-55 win over the in-state rival Auburn Tigers. Alabama's senior trio combined to score as many as the entire Auburn team as Ariah Copeland, Jordan Lewis, and Jasmine Walker totaled 55 points. Copeland and Lewis tied for a game-high 19 each, while Walker had 17. Walker finished as the team's leading rebounder with nine boards, while Lewis was just shy of a triple-double with 19 points. A season-high eight rebounds and a season-best eight assists. Jordan Lewis is second on the team in scoring, averaging over 17 points per game, and was a big reason Alabama defeated Auburn by double digits this past Sunday as she finished with 19 points, 8 rebounds, and 8 assists. When we return, Jordan will join us to talk about the season so far and what it's been like on and off the court this season. Roger Hoover now joined by Alabama women's basketball point guard Jordan Lewis. And Jordan, it's great to see you roll tide. How has everything been this season for Alabama? Um, it's been going well. Uh, we hope to continue um, playing well. And uh, we've had good success around the program, men's basketball, women's basketball. I mean, all the sports are performing right now, so it's been good. And what's been the difference this year for the women's basketball team? We've seen some great comeback victories this year, wins on the road. Why have you guys been so successful? Um, I think between me, Araya, and Jazz as seniors, I think we've really taken in the leadership role more this season. Um, not so much on the court, but off the court, and just knowing how important it is for us to always um, set the tempo and kind of uh, guide everyone. I think um, in prior years, we let adversity hit us and hit us hard, and I don't think we ever learned how to recover from it now. So I think with the experience we have this year, we've learned how to kind of face adversity better than we have in the past. Of course, last year was a tough ending for the Crimson Tide with the COVID-19 pandemic shutting down sports in the spring. Uh, just what can you tell us about trying to play basketball during this time and also kind of the daily discipline that Alabama athletes have to have during the pandemic? Um, it's been hard. I don't think that it's been spoken enough to um, how much we have to go through. Like, we have to be safe. We have to keep each other safe. Um, just day to day, like you always have to have your mask on. You always have to be aware of where you are. Um, it's not really safe for us to go out anywhere unless it's a necessity. So um, just as a team, we've tried to be really safe and cautious and not only protect ourselves, but others. Of course, you've been very successful on the court here at Alabama, but also in the classroom. Just what can you tell the fans about how your studies are going right now as you can still chase down the NBA? Well, I'm completing my last semester of the NBA, hoping to graduate in May. Um, it hasn't been easy. Um, they still require us to go to class. So that's been kind of something that I've been battling with is going to class, trying to stay safe, going to practice. And so I think 
just off the court, like I think that's also helped me in my discipline on the court because if you can be disciplined off the court and take care of those things first, then I think on the court becomes easier. And so it's been a challenge, but I think it's only made me better and a more disciplined and organized person. Well, at home games this year, even though it reduced capacity at Coleman Coliseum, the fans that have been there have been very loud at women's basketball games. Just what's your message to the Crimson Tide fans? I'm sure you want more of that same support heading down the stretch run in February. Um, we are so appreciative of them, um, especially the last two games. I feel like they've been there. They've been loud. They've been cheering for us. Um, they really helped us. Um, I think that it's grown since I first got here. And so that's very important to us that the community is behind us. And I think it's only made us better and i hope they continue to come out and support us jordan thank you for joining us today roll tide thank you roll tide that's jordan lewis stay tuned for more tide tv this week welcome back to tide tv this week brought to you by thompson tractor it's been a great start to the season so far for the alabama gymnastics team and the 10th ranked alabama gymnastics team used a season best score to keep their hot start going against 18th ranked Auburn this past Friday night in Coleman Coliseum. A week after posting a shaky balance beam rotation at Mizzou, Alabama bounced back with its best score since the 2019 regional championships with a score of 49-425, led by Luisa Blanco of the Meet Best 9-9. With a 9-9 from Lexi Graber, Alabama totaled a 49.175 on the vault. On the uneven bars, 9-8 from Cam Machado and Makari Doggett boosted the tide to a season best 49-2 team score. Alabama closed the night with a 49.125 in the floor exercise, led off by Emily Gaskins 9-8 and a career best 9-9 from Saniya Mitchell. Alabama used a season high score to defeat number 18 Auburn 196-925 to 195-575. Alabama swept the individual event titles against Auburn and posted the highest team totals on all four rotations. Shania Adams won her second all-around in a row, scoring a 39-325. Big win for the Tide over their in-state rival as the Tide improved to 3-0 on the season with the win. Don't go anywhere. In just 90 seconds, we'll be back with our Plays and Players of the Week. Boston, Alabama whips a pass inside, the pass of Bullet. to get four, at three, the drive in the dish, Quinterly at two, bottom, great way to end the half for Quinterly, great way to end it for Alabama. True beamer, and she seems to float across the beam. Double twist, and a beauty. Welcome back. Those were our ATI Plays of the Week. Now let's take a look at our Players of the Week, brought to you by Pay Less Drugs. It was a great week for the Crimson Tide with Joshua Primo connecting on 6 of 8 from beyond the arc to finish with 22 points in just 19 minutes of play against LSU. Against Mississippi State, Primo knocked down 4 of 5 on 3-point shots for 16 points in only 23 minutes of action. Primo was named the Southeastern Conference Freshman of the Week. Jordan Lewis had a near triple-double in Alabama's win over Auburn this past Sunday. Lewis finished with 19 points, a season-high eight rebounds, to go with a season-high eight assists and also a steal. And those are our Pay Less Drugs Players of the Week. Thanks for watching another episode of Tide TV This Week. See you next week. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield IMG College.